I'm Jared Dillion, and welcome to the Be Smart Podcast, where we talk about how not to be an idiot with your money, because there's a lot of that going around. I want to talk about crypto today. Uh-oh, this is bad. <laughs> We're going to talk about crypto. The podcast is going to go viral. <laughs> My Twitter is going to blow up for shitting on Bitcoin. I'm not really shitting on Bitcoin. Actually, this is very nuanced, and... Um, it's actually so nuanced. I wanted to talk about this on Twitter, but you know, character limitations and all that. It's it's the it's the the nuance is difficult to get across. So now you have these people in the crypto world. They're just nuts about Bitcoin, and they're called Bitcoin maximalists. And these guys are the biggest jerks in the world. They're just terrorists. Okay, nothing good to say about these guys. Which is interesting because philosophically, I kind of agree with them. They're hard money guys, and I'm a hard money guy. I'm a big gold investor. So, you know, and they believe that the supply of Bitcoin is limited and that Bitcoin will one day replace the dollar and all other currencies in the world, and it will be a digital store of value, which is great. You know, I don't disagree with that. Before we go any further, let me just say that Bitcoin is not a currency. It's not a currency. It's an asset. It is a digital asset. And there's thousands of different cryptocurrencies, and none of them are currencies. They're all digital assets. It's a new asset class. Crypto is a new asset class, just like stocks, bonds, commodities, anything else. Okay. Now, Bitcoin has a lot in common with gold. There is a finite amount of gold in the Earth's surface. We mine some of it every year, and as time goes by, it becomes more and more difficult to mine, and it gets more expensive. Same thing with Bitcoin. There's 21 million Bitcoins in existence. Some of them have been lost. Right now, we have mined about 18 and a half million. We have two and a half million left to go. They're getting harder and harder to mine, and the price keeps going up. So the obvious parallel here is that Bitcoin is gold, just in digital form. Bitcoin is digital gold. Let me tell you a story. 2,000 years ago, what did the financial system look like? Well, 2,000 years ago, the financial system was 100% gold. There was gold coins and gold bars and people transacted in gold, and that was pretty much it. And it stayed that way for over 1,000 years. Then you started to get debt instruments and loans. And three or 400 years later, you had stocks. You had the first publicly traded corporation and bonds. And then sometime after that, you had derivatives. So at this point, you have stocks and bonds and derivatives. And then you have increasing financialization and you have things like structured credit and CDOs and credit default swaps and stuff like that. And then you had ways to trade volatility and derivatives on volatility and derivatives on derivatives on volatility. And now in the year 2021, we have the most complex financial system imaginable. But what happened was 2,000 years ago, gold was 100% of the financial system. And today, it is less than 1%. And everything else is paper. It's paper wealth. It's stocks and bonds. And that's okay. That's totally okay. The crypto world is pretty similar because in the beginning, if you go back to 2010, all you had was Bitcoin. And that persisted for a long time. Then you got Litecoin, and then you started to get other coins. Then you had all different kinds of stuff. Now, Bitcoin doesn't do anything. It has no useful function. It is a pet rock just like gold. But these other blockchains do all different stuff that's really neat. They're the equivalent of stocks and bonds. They are the product of increasing financialization in the crypto world. And then you have the whole world of decentralized finance, which is really fan it's amazing. And over time, Bitcoin is going to play a smaller and smaller role in the crypto universe. And one day it will be less than 1% of all crypto market cap. Now, that doesn't mean that Bitcoin goes down. It doesn't. Might actually go up. But the market share, the percentage of crypto that Bitcoin occupies will go down over time. 
So my goal in investing in crypto is to ignore Bitcoin and invest in the other stuff because this is a bet on increasing financialization. And it doesn't really matter what you invest in as long as you're diversified. Just get a diversified portfolio of crypto. So the Bitcoin maxis, you know, they, they talk about, you know, they shit on Ethereum and they're like, Vitalik can just wind back the clock and print Ethereum and, you know, do all other kinds of funny stuff. But that's true of stocks and bonds, too. It's true of stocks. You can have secondary issuance. It's true of bonds. You can always have more issuance. And let me tell you, not everything has to be an absolute store of value. There's a role for that in the financial system. And in, in the financial system, gold plays that role. And it's less than 1% of all the wealth in the world. It's much less than 1%. You don't need your Tesla stock to be an absolute store of value. There is a role for paper wealth. There is, especially in crypto. The Bitcoin maximalists are the dumbest dummies in the financial world. You know, really not too different from the gold people in 2011. And what do they believe? You know, the, the gold bugs thought that the Fed would revalue gold higher. They'd revalue it to $40,000 an ounce and they'd walk off a hero. And the Bitcoin maxis think we're all going to be using Bitcoin someday and they're going to walk off a hero. Both are completely unrealistic. As civilizations progress, you get increasing financialization. It's just what happens. And a lot of people get upset about this because it's paper wealth instead of tangible wealth. And yes, there are points in history where you want tangible wealth, like during wars, but most of the time you don't. Besides, some of the stuff that these other blockchains are doing is downright incredible. It's really fascinating. And they're getting launched with backing from the best VCs in the world. And the funny thing about this, you know, if you're left of center politically, most of these people, they look at gold and they say it's a shiny rock. Doesn't do anything. There's these people on Twitter. They hate gold. And I'm on the other side of the political spectrum. And I look at Bitcoin and I say, that's a pet rock. <laughs> I mean, at best, it's a hedge and you don't want to build a shrine to your hedge. It's also not a very good hedge because it trades with risk. So I built a small portfolio with seven different altcoins and it's blue chip stuff. It's it's the high market cap stuff. It's not the speculative stuff. And it's a huge amount of fun. So I did this about a month ago and I am up about nine percent on this portfolio in a month, which is pretty good. And over the same time period, Bitcoin is actually down. And I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do have some help. I've been talking to some people who are smart about crypto and I don't need any Bitcoin. I don't need any digital gold because I have lots of actual gold. Now, in terms of you're like, how do I buy this? OK, well, there's you can't miss it anymore. These exchanges have ads all over the place. They have ads in the World Series. They have. I mean, it's crazy. Right. So there's crypto.com and. FTX and uh, Binance. So I use Coinbase Pro. And it's not like the clunky website to use to trade stocks. I mean, this is the gamification of investing. It's fun. Trading crypto is fun. And one of the reasons it's fun is you don't have to think about how much you're buying. You don't have to be like, okay, I have $10,000 and you know, GE is $20 a share, so I buy 5,000 shares. You just plug in the dollar amount, and since crypto is infinitely divisible, you, you just you just buy whatever amount. It's, it's a piece of cake. And the charts and the trading tools are nothing like what they have in stocks. I mean, if you think that we're going to be in an inflationary environment for the next 10 years, like I do, then crypto has to be a portion of your portfolio. And we, when we talk about the awesome portfolio, which is 20% stocks, bonds, gold, cash, and real estate, we say you're supposed to have 20% gold, but I think a certain portion of that should be crypto, maybe a quarter of it. So maybe 5% crypto and 15% gold. I really believe that. In an inflationary environment, you want to be long gold and crypto and short bonds hasn't been working so far, but hopefully soon. 
So let's say you don't know anything about crypto. Where do you learn? Well, pick an app, okay? Pick an app that is not sketchy. <laughs> do some research. And what crypto do you pick? You know, do some research online. You know, what a good place to start is coinmarketcap.com. And you can see the market caps out of all these different coins. And, you know, the higher market cap stuff is more the blue chip stuff. And some of the other stuff is pretty sketchy. And everybody wants to find the next Dogecoin or the next Shiba Inu, but I wouldn't bother with that. Don't be looking for 1,000x gains. Look for 10x gains. And if you build a diversified portfolio, just like with stocks, you won't have a huge amount of volatility, relatively speaking. And if there were such a thing as a crypto index fund, you would probably want that. That doesn't exist yet, so you're going to have to build your own index fund. It's lots of fun. I'm having a good time, and I'll let you know in a few months how it's going, and I'll take my 9% in a month. You've been listening to the Be Smart Podcast by Jared Dillian. See you next time.